in the one called Savior I believe he's the risen one I believe that I'll live forever I believe that my king will come Cause I have found this love I believe in the sun Show me Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our very last week of September in Orchard Kids. If you don't know me, my name is Topher, but you can call me Gopher, Loafer, or Tofu. Call me what you want and I won't lose my composure. No, sir. And I am so glad that you are back with us this morning. All month long, we have been learning about friendship. And friendship is using your words and actions to show others that you care. It's one of the most basic parts of our lives as humans here on Earth. We all love having our friends around, and the best way to show them that they are our friends is by using our words and actions to show them that we care about them. Now, it's also something that's super important to God. God cares a lot about the friendships in your life. He even gave us this great memory verse that we've been working on all month long trying to learn. It comes from Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, and it says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. That's great news because it means that our friends are there for us when we have a hard time and we get the opportunity to be there for our friends when they're having a hard time. It's super important. And you know, since we're all such good friends, I wanted to let you guys in on, well, it shouldn't be a secret, but we are having Orchard Kids in person again. Every single Sunday during the 1045 service, we are having Orchard Kids right here at Orchard on the CF campus. Today, we are gonna learn an incredible story about friendship. And it's also a story about forgiveness. So, I think it's time to watch the so-and-so show. I'll see you guys after. 17, 18, 19, oh. 20. Oh. All right. Oh. There you go. Pin the tail on that donkey. Which way is it? It's right in front of you. Where? Oh, yeah, I don't you know. I don't, I don't know. This time I'm not going to be able to do this. Love this game. <laughs> oh. Hello? No, no, I can talk. Oh, that just means Goldie is stressed. Yeah, you got you to take him out of the fishbowl. 
Yeah, no, I, I do it all the time. You just take him out with your hand and hold him in your hand. Then you want to kind of kind of rub his side, like go go with the scales. Give him a little rub. Is that working? Okay, well, uh, look into his eye and uh, do some like breathing exercises. You want to try that? Mike, can you just put Goldie on the phone? Just put the phone by Goldie. Let me talk to him. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, how you doing? You a little stressed? Let's, let's do some breathing like we do, okay? Here we go, ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Okay, one more, ready? Breathe in. Breathe out! Hello, party people. Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and it's time to play Ultimate Block Party Warrior. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to Ultimate Block Party Warrior. I'm Mickey Hutch, and here with me is the legend himself, retired wrestling great Harvey the Brick Brickowski. Hey, you brought the party, Mick. I brought the warrior. Smackdown! <laughs> <laughs> uh, today we have Brandon and John going head-to-head -head in a winner-take-all race inspired by some of our favorite neighborhood block party games. First contestant to complete each of the seven stations will be considered the ultimate block party warrior. Hey, let's get out to the course and show our folks at home what our contestants are up against. Station number one is the Super Soaker String Race. Use the Super Soaker to get your cup from one end of the string to the other. Station number two, cornhole on the cob. No bean bags here. Station number three, soccer ball bowling. Number four, carrot dog crunch. Have a healthy snack in the middle of racing by gnawing on a delicious carrot dog. Mm. Station number five, the 15-foot mini trike run. Station number six, blindfold bobbing for icebergs. Real icebergs! No, no, lettuce. <laughs> and the final station, station number seven, the paper sack race. What do you say, Brick? Are you ready for this? I was born ready, Mick. Let's do this! And there they go. Boy, these two guys look like they're in great shape for old people. All right, here we are. And now we've got the uh, station number one, the Silly String Soaker. It looks like uh, John is having trouble. Uh, he can't seem to... Ooh, Brandon is moving quickly. Yeah, the, the approach difference is John is losing. Cornhole on the cob. Boy, John is my, finally catching up. Mm -hmm. And Brandon... And John are neck and neck. Oh! At the, oh, and Brandon has Did you finished. see that? I did. No. Oh boy, Br John is stuck. He has the, oh. the throw of a, of, a, of a lemur. Let's cut to Brandon. His uh, soccer skills are lacking, I would say. It's probably because he doesn't like soccer very much. Oh, uh, what, a, what a pity. Oh, look, and John's back up here, and with his first kick, he knocks three pins down. He is, he's taking the lead. I've never seen a more pathetic display of soccer skills than watching Brandon perform here today. Boy, you could say that twice or maybe even three no. times. I've never seen such a pathetic display of soccer skills than Brandon performing here today. And it's still and right on cue. John has finished. He's moving on to the carrot dog. Oh boy, it's fully loaded. That's right, he's put the carrot dog in the bun. Now he's got to put some chili on there, some relish, some onions, and top it off with a little mustard and ketchup and some spray cheese. Mm. Boy, boy, doesn't that just make your mouth water? It makes my mouth do something. All right. Oh, and Brandon finished his soccer pins. I'm not sure he uh, actually did it uh, to regulation, but we're, we're just going to pretend he did. Absolutely. Boy, this is a struggle right here. It looks like John's never eaten healthy in his life. And it looks like he forgot the spray cheese and he just put a mountain of it on top. Boy, I don't know if there's going to be any uh, uh, you know, penalty for that. Oh, looks like Brandon was a little tired out. He's going to have a seat. I don't know if that's in the rules or not. Oh, it looks like he's pulling out a knife and fork. Huh? I'm not sure there are any rules in this game. <laughs> I'm, I've never heard of it before until today. He secretly finished that carrot dog. So. Oh, 
Oh, he swallowed it. Yes, I don't know how that happened. He's going to move on to station number five, the 15 foot mini trike run. This is a tricky one. Oh, but he's maneuvering that wheel with expertise. He's moving on to the iceberg. Bob, I don't know why we call it Iceberg Bob. There's still no ice in there, Mick. I don't understand. Yeah, there's no way Brandon will be able to uh, catch up to John's skill. Oh, it looks like John has figured out a new technique here. He's going, he's pushing the head of lettuce to the bottom of the bucket with his face. <laughs> oh, he's, oh, he's in there. He's in there. Whoa, he's completely submerged. He got it. John is moving on to the final station while Brandon is still struggling to get the iceberg lettuce into his mouth. This looks like a clear win for, oh, he ripped the bag. He's gonna have to start over again. If Brandon comes back to win this, I'll eat my own sandal. John is definitely going to win. Oh! oh! He's ripped. ripped the bag. That means he has to start over again. I know, so much to recycle. Brandon is now definitely in the lead. He is moving sort of slowly, and uh, John uh -oh. could come back if he hurries up uh -oh. at this pace. Oh, uh -oh. John is ripped. It looks like it's almost it over. It is all the way over. Brandon has crossed the finish line and won this race. And John is a bitter, bitter man. Look at that. Oh, and John's running over to the... Uh, He's still running. It's over, John. Yeah, that's right. Brandon is celebrating, uh, and not, you know, in a gregarious way. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! This is ugly. You hate to see this in sport. Block party foul. That's correct. Uh, somebody's got to step in and stop this. Where's the ref? Oh, oh, John just picked up a buttery cob of corn and threw it right at Brandon. This is, this is ugly. This is, you don't want to see this between friends. Yeah, we should stop watching this. Yeah, but I can't stop watching. Me neither. Yeah. There's nothing like watching two people who are out of shape fight. That's all the time we have today on Ultimate Block Party Warrior. Tell them what's up next, Brick. Sure, Mick. It's Bubble Story Time with Gillen. Oh, yeah. Hey, fellas. Whoa. Um, what is going on? Why did you soak me? You cheated. I did not. I was just playing you a game like- You carrot dog with a fork. So what? There's the, nothing in the rules the, that says- There's nothing in the rules, is it? Okay, now okay. you're just being- ah! Okay, 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 okay. Okay, um, who is up for a story? Sure, Kellen. So, not sure any story can repair the damage sure here, though. story can repair ah, the damage. Please, please. I'll see what I can do. <clears throat> After Jesus had died and come back to life, his disciples went out for an overnight fishing trip. But by morning, they hadn't caught a single fish. Did someone say fish? I did, but I don't, I don't think this is really... My name is Florence. I'm a fish. And let me tell you a story. This one time, I saw a fella jump into the Sea of Galilee after 153 of my friends were pulled onto a boat by a handful of ragtag fishermen. That's actually the story I'm telling, but... Oh, how convenient. I'll help you tell it. Okay, okay, fine. But just to be clear, there were no talking fish in the Bible or anywhere. What's that? Uh, no, <clears throat> nothing, nothing. Uh, just tell us your story, Florence. All right, so there I was swimming around in the Sea of Galilee like I do most nights. Or at least I think I do. I'm a fish. I got a really short-term memory. What was I talking about? Hopefully something about fishermen. Right. There were these fishermen in a boat up there, and they'd been trying all night to catch me and my friends, and we were like, no thanks. Okay, but what happened the next morning? Well, I heard this loud voice calling from shore. It said, friends, don't you have any fish? So I popped out of the water to get a better look. I saw this guy. He built a fire on the beach. And then he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat. Yes. The man on the beach was Jesus. He had just come back from the dead a short time ago. No kidding. Well, I don't know much about that, but I do know that when those fishermen threw their net on the right side of the boat, something happened. My friends started swimming up from all over the place. They were drawn to that net like a moth to a flame. I was there too, right in the middle of it all. Those fishermen caught so many of us, they couldn't even pull the net into the boat. So you were one of the fish that got caught? 
Yeah, I was right there on the top of the fish pile. I was gasping for water, and I hear this one guy yell, it's the Lord, talking about this Jesus guy on the beach. Then this other guy puts his coat on and jumps in the water. Now, why you need your coat to take a dip, I don't know. I've been swimming without a coat as long as I can remember. The guy you're talking about, his name is Peter. When he saw Jesus on the shore, he decided to swim to his friend as fast as he could. Yeah, he beat us to shore all right. The boat could barely move, dragging a net full of fish behind it. As we got closer, I heard Jesus say, bring some of the fish you've just caught. That's when I decided to get out of there, but 153 of my friends weren't so lucky. Oh, wow. Hmm, I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm a fish. You get used to it. Um, yeah, of course you do. So Jesus and the fishermen, his disciples, had um, <clears throat> breakfast on the beach. Yeah, and after they ate, Jesus and that Peter guy started talking, but I didn't understand what they were talking about. Perhaps I can help with that. Oh boy, a talking rooster. Name's Chuck, Chuck the rooster. And I was with Peter the day Jesus died. Okay, we're doing this, but again, just to be clear, no talking roosters have ever existed. Ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Kellen, I get it. I'm a storytelling device. Can I tell my part of the story now? Why not? Okay. So on the night Jesus was arrested. Wait, Jesus was arrested? Yeah, Jesus was arrested. Where you been the last month? Underwater? I'm a fish, Chuck. Valid. Jesus was arrested. And then I see Peter hanging around when this one gal is like, you aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? And Peter was like, I am not. Oh, that's cold. Yeah. But then someone else says to Peter, you, yeah, you, aren't you one of them? And Peter again is like, nope. Methinks he doth protest too much. Sure, yeah, whatever. Then a third time someone is like, I literally saw you with Jesus. And Peter yells, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it was too much. I crowed at the top of my lungs. I thought they were supposed to be friends. I know, but Peter was scared. So he denied knowing Jesus three times. Oh, it all makes so much sense now. On the beach after breakfast, Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And Peter's like, yeah, you know I do. Jesus asked him three times. That's how many times Peter said he didn't know who Jesus was, right? That's right. And Jesus said some other things to Peter too, didn't he? Probably. It was hard to catch the whole conversation just popping my head out of the water over and over. Plus I'm a fish, so. You know, short-term memory. Okay, I'll take it from here. Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. And three times, Peter said, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus responded each time, Feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. Even after Peter denied knowing Jesus, Jesus forgave Peter and trusted Peter to take care of his followers. And later, Peter would go on to be the leader of the early church. And that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for your help, Florence and Chuck. You bet. I'm happy to help. Now, if you excuse me, I have to get up early tomorrow. That's a rooster joke. Okay, bye. What you think, fellas? That was a really great story, Kellen. Yeah. I love how Peter couldn't wait to get to Jesus. He literally just jumped in the water. Didn't matter that he got wet. And I love how Jesus forgave Peter. That, that must have been hard. I'm sure it was hard. It had to hurt Jesus to know what Peter did. But Jesus' love for Peter was incredible. It's the same love that God has for us. So when we mess up, God forgives us again and again and again because he wants us to know how loved we are and he wants us to learn to love others the same way he loves us. Thanks, Kellen. You got it. I'll see you guys next time. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, no I, I'm, I didn't. I'm...
You, you go first. first. <sighs> okay, look, I sh shouldn't have gotten mad at you when you sprayed me with the super soaker. I just, it hurt my feelings, and I, I just wanted to hurt you back, but I ne never should have acted that way. Well, and I... I really overreacted when you won. I, I wanted to win so bad that I let it get in the way of our friendship. And... Oh, man. Forgiveness feels good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> hey, reveal the question. How do you react when a friend hurts you? Oh, there are a lot of ways you could react. Yeah, you, should, you could give them the cold shoulder. You can yell at them. Or you could spray them with a super soaker. No, 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 no. <laughs> Talk about it with each other. How do you react when a friend hurts you? Yeah, and we'll see you next time on The So and So Show. That's right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Anything goes with a carrot dog. <laughs> I'll take a bite. How do you like it? Man, that's awful. Hmm. I like the onions, especially. No. 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 I can't believe I signed a contract to sell these things. It's a carrot and a hot dog bun. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what an incredible story. I mean, what Peter had done must have really hurt Jesus' feelings, but instead of being angry at him or being mad, what did he do? He told him that he loved him and he forgave him for what he'd done. You know, that is exactly what I want you guys to remember from this week's story. It's our bottom line. Friends forgive one another. You know, Jesus really was the expert on forgiveness. I mean, Everything that he did here on earth was to forgive us of our sins that we're committing all the time. And you know, he wants you to forgive the people around you as well. Maybe you have a friend who you were planning on seeing a movie with, and then you find out they saw that movie with somebody else. You could get angry at them, or you could choose to forgive them. You know, we all have lots of chances to forgive people in our lives, and we definitely give people plenty of chances to forgive us, too, right? I mean, we don't always make the wise choice. We don't always make the right decision, and sometimes we hurt the people that we care about. But in those times, it's so wonderful when our friends are willing to forgive us. And as we're always talking about, we want to treat others the way we want to be treated. So if we want forgiveness, we should be giving forgiveness as well. And remember, you have to be wise about forgiveness. Just because you forgive someone for something doesn't mean you have to keep hanging out with them if they keep hurting you or making you feel bad. You have to protect yourself and make sure that you stay on the right path. All right, that's all I have for you guys this morning. So would you pray with me? God, thank you so much for sending Jesus to forgive us for our sins. And thank you for using him as such an incredible example of what it means to forgive a friend who's wronged you. I pray this week we could remember Jesus' example and how, instead of getting angry at Peter, he chose forgiveness. God, help us this week choose forgiveness when someone gets on our nerves or when someone does something wrong to us. And also, God, just keep us safe. Thank you so much for who you are and what you've done. We pray all of this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.